Welcome, everybody, to Ink Blood Meet and Greets episode. I don't know what, but we're also When I said that you blasted me, can you see? What? Yeah, just like those horrible bosses on Twitter from a few weeks ago. I don't know why you guys are dragging me, please. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't be like that guy that came on to defend himself. That didn't go well. <laughs> I don't know why he bothered. I know, right? It's so unfortunate. <laughs> and then people started the dropping receipts in real time. In... I actually know the guy. So I will not go into it. But I'm glad that you all are Please here. Please drag him when you see him next You know time. me, Damola. This is my co anchor Zulu. The other guy at the end, I don't know why he's still on this show. The charity Nas. case. The charity case, now <laughs> my queen wave. And with us today, we have possibly. Choose your words very carefully. Possibly. Possibly, what is why I put possibly or allegedly? <laughs> the best. Is it a scene of a crime? I don't understand. <laughs> allegedly, possibly, you know, the best. One of the DOP, aka Director of Photography. If you do not know, of, aka Sha, allegedly, the best guy, the cinematographer of <laughs> every movie that you've possibly seen. In hey. the past couple of years, Uncle. that <laughs> has blown your mind. Just wait now, I'm getting there. That's blown your mind. John Dems, Mr. John Dems. John nice Jagger Dems. Because yeah. I love traditional names. Uh, Welcome okay. on the show. Thank Welcome you. Thank you. Show. Thank you. Because that night of Jagger, I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're well, actually doing this. We're finally doing this. New podcast. I have a baby, they said. My name is Ibrahim. This My is Linda Ejafo Suleiman. Ibrahim, so I think that's why we're doing it, right? Yeah. Because you... people do not tell us things. Yes, this is us calling out our friends who have had kids and did not tell us and say, hey, Watch look at this. what you are going to go through. That's my son is an old man. He said I was going to be the one that would do the, do the spanking and you would be the one that would Dialogue. talk to him. But he was born. And your move button was pushed. New parent. <laughs> <laughs> the same way it's new to us, it's new to the toddler. <laughs> Let's all grow together. Yeah. So, we, we can probably list a bunch of movies that you've done, but which one would you say was like your first movie in Nigeria? First of all, thanks for having me here. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great honor. Um, my first film in Nigeria was play, A Place in the Stars. Oh, okay. With Steve Gukas. With Steve yes, Gukas. Gukas. Yeah. And Steve and I actually met on a project in Namibia when he was, uh, he was an acting producer. Okay. And uh, so after we finished that film, uh, he said, John, I want to bring you to Nigeria to, to work with me on my next film. Okay. So he brought me here. That was back in 2007 or something. Did like you that. say he was an acting producer? I mean, well, I meant one of the producers. Okay, okay. I, thought, I thought you meant he was an actor. <laughs> I, I was like, did you guys used to act? <laughs> no, I, I, I thought it was acting producer. Okay. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah. So that was your first time, 2007. And yeah. then, so that film was shot that long ago. Because I know because you yes. said it took a while yeah. for it to finish. There were like five DOPs on that film. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, the, I did the first two years, mm -hmm. and then I wasn't available. At that time, I was still living in, in, in the US. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you, the project, you were on the project for two years? No, no, no. Oh. The, I did the first two years. Okay. The, because he, he, we shot, yeah, and then he ran out of money, then we okay. broke, and then he collected more money, I came back. Oh, okay. And so he did that for the next five years, basically. Mm, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's, that took a while. Yeah, that's yeah. That's I remember surprised. it came out in like 2013, 2014. <clears throat> yes, yes. Oh, yeah. nice. So then, that was your first introduction to Nigeria. So, yes. coming yes. from coming Namibia, back. South Africa, and all of that, what was your impression of Nollywood then, in 2007? It was, uh, okay, I think I could do a lot of things to help the industry grow. Okay. okay. Yes. And uh, right now, I'm like so happy to see where the industry is here now. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I started coming, I would have to bring so many of my toys and gadgets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because I knew it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Now I travel with one suitcase. Oh, nice. <laughs> That, you, you, know, guys, you guys understand you how um, relieving that is because yeah. you see these guys travel with yeah. the equipment, they move around. Those with. pelican cases. Oh my goodness. Yes. And then insurance. The extra Hoping luggage. that it doesn't get lost. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. once the case is actually. But there's fantastic. something that you. And, and so I, I think that's a very interesting thing because you know how there are different ways you. Um, you gauge the growth of an industry, mm -hmm. and this is generally one that's interesting. People are in, investing in cinematography. The other question I was going to ask. So, and I'm going to ask this is a very technical question for the people out there. Okay. Black Magic, <laughs> Ari, Red, 
which would you pick? I'm an Ari guy. Yeah, an Ari guy. <laughs> yes. So great. So you guys know out there that Ari is the way to go. No. <laughs> Forget about <laughs> it. Ignore the black magic. No. Please, bro. Every camera has its place and its budget and everything. So please let us let us let us remember that we are still in Hollywood, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I, cause I know a bunch of people like I have that argument like constantly, which is better. Which one delivers what you need, blah, 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 blah. And blah. which one can suit your budget. And yes, then there's yeah. also the budget conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, if you don't, if budget is not a constraint. No, it's okay. There's no such thing. There's always, I mean, <laughs> which is world always is always a constraint. constraint. <laughs> I mean, but I guess one of the things that I, because that I, I mean, so we first met John, um, I think it was a year ago, I believe. Yes. Um, so um, Ni and John had just worked together. Nia Kimalayo, yeah. and he was all very, very excited, like, man, I had the greatest time working with John, and he's agreed to do a, a workshop, with, and just basically to share and with a bunch of Nigerian filmmakers, and um, is this something that you guys are interested in? And we're like, yes, because it was, hey, hey, what are we doing, right? Even though, as you said, we ended up not <laughs> showing up yeah. until the very end. Right. But like, I, but I, but I, but one of the things I loved about that was that you were so like everybody was like, oh my god, this was a great experience, and and they loved working with you. So how, so how have you found that receptiveness as you have worked in here over the years? You know, it's <clears throat> having a good rapport yeah. with the people that you work with is very important to me. Because it's like you come together and you're all in one place to put this one product mm. on, and so on, on, on the screen. So you can't do that if you have you know, tension with this person or with this person. You have to be in sync. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? So that, you know, I found that making people at ease, you know, not being difficult, those kind of things help me to, you know. So character is as important as talent. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because I've worked in so many different places, I'm used to working with different gaffers. Yeah. Because as I was coming up, I was a gaffer myself. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's, it's obvious. So I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite obvious. So, so like, I saw your light list. <laughs> <laughs> so carry on. If a gaffer, if, if a DOP wants this particular gaffer, there's going to be a shorthand, mm-hmm. which is going to save you time because yeah. he, he knows his style. Yes. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he'll have to supervise a lot more, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, and, and I've had, I've been in that experience where I've had a guy would have to go in and basically do, redo everything that he's put up. Okay. okay. So you save time. In the end, you're going to save time, mm-hmm. okay. which is our biggest enemy on set. Yeah. Are you a two camera guy or one camera guy? One camera guy. Yeah, and one do camera you carry guy. or do you watch? What's your preference? I carry. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, you so, actually prefer to you carry? Prefer to carry? Yes, of course. Oh, so, of course. I have a question. So in that one camera, two camera setup, why, why would you pick like a one camera setup over a two camera setup? What are the advantages of either? Because, you, because your you? actors will look a lot better with one camera. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why? Because when you're lighting for two cameras, yeah. and you, each camera needs its own particular light yeah, so to oh, make that actor look good. Okay. Yeah. So whatever you do for that second actor, may not look good on the first actor. actor yeah. mm. So you're compromising the look of your actors. Okay. But then that, doesn't that then create a situation where you now have more scenes and that takes more time? Not if you plan well. Okay. I mean, and, and you know, I'll bring in two cameras when there's action and things like that. Yeah. But for, for regular scenes, I think, you know, for example, like these big mega, um, mega budget movies like Blade Runner 20, when they shot with yeah, one camera, one camera. Yeah. you know? Is that so, is that like the standard? Not standard, but is it ma- majority of the shoots in in Hollywood? Do they use one camera or two cameras, or is it like the, balanced? The majority they use one. One. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because they light for everything now. Yeah. No, I'm just trying, because this question I just asked is because some people do look wrong. <laughs> no. So I was just trying to. And so what we do is that you do a diffuse. So you do a like a basic diffuse lighting. Light. So that means that you don't get that fancy key lighting. I was talking about black things. people lighting, guys. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you see, that's a separate. Okay. But, but let's yeah, talk about that. that okay, no, no, that's a good segue, that's a, right? Yes. So one of the, so one, we had this argument or some on another. We had, we had this argument last week where we're discussing lighting Hollywood problem with lighting black people. So and we use the example of 
the Good new one. Bond movie where the the new 007 chick was yeah, always I like in the that. shadows. And I was yeah. like, they didn't care about her. They didn't yeah. care about that at all. Comes, it comes down to care. <laughs> yes, that's what I said, you see? Now you have said it, you're not listening to me. No, I'm not. He's a VOP, I listen to him, please. Because I was like, no, they didn't care. They didn't care. No, but okay, so then it's that. So they didn't care about her, right? But then everybody started raving about season two or season three of Insecure when I think Mazuki basically directed and I think she oversaw that particular season and everybody was raving about the lighting for that particular episode and the cinematography yeah, for she, that particular but it, season. But they said it looked like a music video. So let's just segue into that. Because music videos in, from the 80s have been lighting black people Very amazingly. Well. Even that nice one that we saw, what, how many years ago was it? Well, Queen and Slim. Queen and Slim. It's the same man's okay. So, no, so, so basically, so talk to me about your music fantastic. video experience. Mm. Wow. Yes. Yes, well, because you have was... done, please tell us even the names. There's some great ones <laughs> yes. with some because, great because, so, because Her music videos, because while we weren't seeing beautifully black people on Hollywood, Hollywood. Theme, we're music videos were standard. like... We're seeing yeah. beautiful, beautifully lit booties. <laughs> <laughs> Black booties. This is, this is going to become a family <laughs> show. This is going to become a family show going forward. Yo, those nineties guys, come on, uh, hip hop. Wow. So what music videos did you do? Okay, so I started out. Basically, I was a gaffer, mm-hmm. doing a, doing the doing the peak of rap. Oh, okay. nice. Okay. And this particular company uh, called Underdog Films, they mm-hmm. they did a lot of rap videos. Mm-hmm. So I was I was gaffing for. A, for probably a couple of years. And then, so one day, this white DOP who I was gapping for, he said, hey, why don't you give John a shot? Mm-hmm. Let him do this, uh, this next video. Once I did that, the ball just started rolling. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. So then... Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Had you um, told him that you were interested in directing, or did he just yeah, think, he knew. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. He, he, he okay. knew because he and I had gone to the same film school. Oh, okay. But, okay. but he, I think this DOP was like, came two years after I had finished. Mm-hmm. Okay. You guys know the Hughes brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hughes brothers were at the same company. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. So I shot a lot of vi- uh, videos with them. Okay. Um, I shot uh, Tupac. Okay. Oh, Tupac. I did the I ain't, ma- I ain't Mad at You. Oh, oh nice. nice. Uh, I shot a, a lot of clips with NWA. Okay. I did that one. Uh, that's long the form right? one, which yeah. was uh, which was like a 1940s piece where they're robbing a bank. Bank, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guns, yeah. yeah. We, we, we shot like seven days on Oh, that. wow. It was long form. Mm. <laughs> and then uh, I shot Queen Latifah. Oh, hey, girl. Um, so fly girl. Okay, but you said hey, girl. She oh, just said, oh, she just, I don't like, like you know, that. Queen Latifah, the watcher of my podcast. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> she, she's not watching the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I shot, you know, during that time, I would shoot at least in one month, I would shoot like four or five music videos. Oh, wow. Because they were just, because there was this thing called the box. Yes. Yeah. Where people would order video clips. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the record Yeah, we're old enough to remember this box. Yes. So the, so the. I'm the, Gen Z. <laughs> so the record companies were putting a lot of money into in the, the video in clips. The videos, yeah. But once MTV started, yeah. and they started to pick and choose, who they would put on the air, yeah. the record company started cutting the budget. Yeah. The question that we have is, film is like to, it's like, it's like F1 pit crews, right? So the mm-hmm. best film sets, everybody's working to maximum efficiency, mm-hmm. and every HOD says this, give me my team, we'll deliver for you, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But then that also has the effect of almost creating a closed shop. That's the question I was going to ask. So <laughs> You're saying it better. Carry so, on. <laughs> so how do you... So like, so no film project is a charity, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? And so in each film, you want a closed shop. But each, if each film has a closed shop, how does the industry grow? So how... Because that you have tension, to live So like, how do we... So what is the best way, way of walking through that tension? Is it that you walk through the tension outside of the film sets and you walk through it via training? But So like, that's the one thing that we have also struggled with. Mm-hmm. Yes, and in the camera department, which is a key department, is the one where we're like, ah, we can't fuck this shit up, Sha. So we just say, okay, okay, okay. So it would be good to get your sense about that. Yeah, I think, you know, you know what I try to do on every job? I always try to have a trainee okay. in, in each department. Okay. So that kind of helps, you know, that department get used to that person. Okay. So if there's a job that comes up where, okay, we need an extra guy, they can hire that, actually hire that person on okay. the crew. Okay. So... That relationship has has started already. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's good to use that. I try to do that on each job. 
Okay. okay. So it eases the, the um, yeah. higher, basically. Yes, exactly. Right. For, like, for, for example, um, there was a job um, I did with Funke, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we'll get to the saga. Yes. yes. Congratulations. And Thank you. The highest grossing Nigerian <laughs> film. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, one of the guys who was a gaffer on Jennifer's Diary mm -hmm. actually worked on the crew mm -hmm. of Omogeto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I could see the guy, I mean, I don't know what he was doing on Jennifer, mm -hmm. but it was almost as if he was just starting in the business. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I talked to my gaffer and I said, look, this guy, he hustles, he has uh, energy. Mm -hmm. You just need the direction. direction. He just mm -hmm. needs direction. Mm -hmm. So now they pick the guy up. Nice. Every job they do, he's on their crew. Oh, nice. You know? So I think it's really important to just to expose people. Okay. You know, even if they just want to come and observe. Mm -hmm. You know, let them see what's happening. Let them see. Because, you know, once <laughs> they say, like, once the, once the train starts going, there's no stopping, yeah. you know? How do you, because there generally are two schools of thought for the relationship between DOPs and directors, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's the, um, the directors that want the DOP to design the look of the film, and then they're the, and they say, they come in and they say, okay, actor, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. and, the, and they're the directors that want to collaborate with the DOP to design the look of the film. In your experience, which version do you prefer and why? I prefer the collaboration okay. because basically my, I'm here to put the director's vision on screen. Mm -hmm. So, but if I find that director has no vision. <laughs> ah, that's, 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 that's what I was waiting for. Oh, that was the part I was waiting for. That was part I was waiting for. That's when you have to kind of like take the ball and run with it, you know? After the director that has no vision, what do you do next? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I found is that Preparation. Yep. You you really design your movie in the prep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because once shooting starts, it's like no stopping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I'm on a job and I see that the director is having problems with the vision, I I, I just go into the script okay. and I try to uh, interpret mm -hmm. what's being said mm -hmm. in some kind of emotional way, mm -hmm. because emotions help drive yeah. my lighting. Mm -hmm. And drive how really? I, yes, yes, yes. If I know what, what the emotional aspect is of this scene, mm -hmm. I know how to design my light and my camera, da 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 da. Oh, okay. you know? mm -hmm. So I use that a lot. So I try to give myself enough time to, to go through the script three, four, There's five times okay. and, and pull those things out so that once we're on set, I can present my ideas before shooting mm -hmm. and see if the director likes what, I, what I've come up with. Mm -hmm. And then we, once we're on set, we just go. So, you know, how do you enjoy watching movies? Yeah, I have to watch a movie twi <laughs> twice. <laughs> twice, right? <laughs> because the first time, I watch it for the film. Yeah. But if it's a movie that I really enjoy the look, mm -hmm. I'll go back and I'll watch it again technically. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So you do the other way around. Because most people struggle to watch it watch for the film <laughs> the first, yeah. time. first time. Yes, yes. So yes. most of the people are watching and then you now start... I watch it for the film all the time. Prior to joining... I only yeah. generally watch things Blood. once. Prior to Ink Blood, I would watch the movie for the film. But then after a while, you now start to pay attention to, okay, what's going on here? What's that going on? And then you now start to pay attention to what's really happening in the background, or again, what's happening in the foreground. Yeah. And I was like, ah, no, 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 no. So the one thing that I do do sometimes, but business is like, do, do, do. do I rem <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Is that I think it was the first movie that I did this for was uh, Mad Max, Fury Road, mm -hmm. that they said you should watch this movie. The best, like watching Mad Max with the sound off yes. is a Literally. film school in and of itself. Yes. yes. Totally. And so I was like... I can't even watch it with the sound on. On? Yeah. <laughs> so Mad Max, me. So, and then I realized that like, and so most people, but the thing is that if, as one of the best director trainings and writing for that matter is to watch any movie you like, watch it with the sound off. Because you realize how much of the emotion and subtext of the scene yes. is driven by blocking and camera movements. Yes. So when you watch Nigerian movies, right, what's, that, what's the, like the cardinal scenes that you see being repeated most times? Like that thing. And what are the good things? Yeah, yeah so I have, to, I have to do both sides, right? Yes. What are the things that drive you crazy? And what are the things that you're like, ah, great, spot that on. That drive you crazy. Yes, but <laughs> both, both. <laughs> okay, uh, I would say, first of all, I think you have more interesting stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, because I've worked in the U.S. and I've worked here. Mm. 
The stories, you have fantastic stories. The, uh, the things that kind of annoy me are just like the, the blocking. Like a lot of people would just sit and talk or stand and talk. There's like no movement of the actors and things like okay, that. Because so I thought that's someone to explain blocking, but then thank you if you explained it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, like I was watching, I was like, okay, the scene could be like a three minute scene. And it's yeah. like, why are they just still sitting here? <laughs> like it oh. shouldn't look like a talk show. Exactly. 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 And one of the things that I find very interesting is that in the DP director relationship is this. So your director is tired. Yeah, you mm -hmm. people stand there, don't move. What do you do? <laughs> Pull out this slide. Should you actually do anything? I'm asking, that's what I'm asking. No. Yes. I would give my suggestions. You know, you, you always have to be like politically correct. Yeah, exactly. You know? you know, so you can't go in and just say, you know, this is crap. You know, you just you have to say, okay, what do you think if we did this or did this and did this? And if they tell us, oh yes, go ahead. You know, oh, you don't pull out a slider and just start to move. Start to move the camera. You know, you know, I would suggest some different blocking and you know things like that. And you know, like nowadays because of this technology, you can like you know because of all these different different apps you have on your phone, you can like show him something quickly just on your phone. Yeah. You know, okay, look at this. What do you think about this? You know, and if it works, it works. You know, so it's. Uh, I just try to be politically correct and suggest something. So know? the other <laughs> question is time, right? So any so the com the complexity of shorts takes time, right? Yeah. So all those mm -hmm. nice, I'm, the short comes from a two short to a wide to a close up to a this to a that that mm -hmm. DOPs like so much, mm -hmm. right? So how do you build those types of shorts into like a Nigerian schedule? Nigerian schedule meaning how many days of shoots? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and the number of scenes, etc., yeah, etc. Per day. Yeah, I, I think for me it all goes back to the prep. Okay. okay. For example, I would love to have time with the director, mm -hmm. just in a relaxed environment, mm -hmm. and go through the script, mm -hmm. just to talk oh, about like his vision. Oh, going for drinks. Yes. You know, no. just just relax. <laughs> Everyone's relaxed. Even even you can involve the production designer. Exactly. Just the that's those three people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go through the script. Do a page turn just to talk about the look of each film and how you want to shoot it because each scene has its own language. Yeah. Right. So once you get that done, mm -hmm. you can make a battle plan. Yeah. But that first conversation, as you said, is so important. Mm -hmm. So you are making the same film. So many yes. times, people make like three different films. Mm -hmm. The costume designer is making their own film. The, the makeup artist is making, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. So what brought you from the US to Africa? So, because I know you were in Namibia for a bit earlier. Yeah, that so was- what brought you from the US to Africa? Yeah, that was the job that actually, that was my first job in Africa, actually. Okay. Oh, that first, that first- That, that uh, job in Namibia. Yeah, yes. oh, okay. And then that's when I met Steve. And then I brought you to and Nigeria. Then Steve, yeah, and then after that, Steve introduced me to many filmmakers here. Okay. okay. And then um, I started coming back to do, I did like a, a reality show, uh, Martina Dance Hall. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I did the show for like eight yeah. years. Oh, wow. Yes, so, okay. so I was on that show. Yeah, an OG here now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that, so that means you were there when Kemi was a host and went to South Africa. Exactly. Yeah. After that is when, uh, Jungle wanted to do his first movie. Oh, okay. okay. That's so, Crossroads. Crossroads. So we, so we did Crossroads, and then, uh, you know, things just started rolling from there. So, um, what brings you to Nigeria now? <laughs> well, I want to you, are very, you are very weird. Is this where you want to announce it? No, I'm just saying that. Yeah, like, yeah, very, <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? We're not announcing. You know, I, just, I just be like, I'm here to walk. And then, you know, who are the people that you're working with? I know some people call it bloods, you know? <laughs> hey, that's You all. said it all. You said it all. <laughs> <laughs> but we're very excited to be working we're, with we're you. We're very excited to be working with you for the first time. I'm <laughs> super excited because, like, knowing you is like knowing Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> the things that matter to Zulu, yes. You know, so. Some, some people ask me, they say, so what was it like working with Tupac? I said, you know, I remember, I'll never forget this day. We come in, we're setting up lights and everything, and he comes in, he's so nice, saying, hello, how are you, what's your name, blah, 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 blah. And then like two hours later, he comes back after he's, mm -hmm. and he's like, a demon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you MF, what the F, what the F? I'm like, is this the same guy? <laughs> hey, but I have a story. Yeah. I, I shot one music video. Uh, it was with a rap group. 
and they were from Oakland. Yeah, right? yeah. We were sh we, it, was, it was shot in L.A. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they were associated with the, the yeah. Bloods. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so they didn't realize, whoever scouted the location didn't do their research. And we filmed the sequence where one of the, uh, of the singers, of the rappers, he's doing some graffiti on a wall in the alleyway. Okay. And just so happened, one of the local game members passed by and saw. Mm -hmm. We were surrounded by like 300 gang members oh, wow. within like one hour. On this corner, we had to call the LA Police Department. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting a music video. <laughs> I, uh, I think we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Please send help. We're about to get, we're about to get car stopped. That our was equipment. like, I felt like I was in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any story in, like, that you've had in Nigeria that can top that? Oh, let's see. No, not that. That, that, that <laughs> thing. That's no, that, no. that's that's, that's the craziest one. That's, that's an all timer. That's that's for, sure. that's for sure. That's so. What's been your craziest Nigerian experience? I would say. Having to wait for actors on a set. <laughs> you have been vindicated. You know, like feeling vindicated. Six hours, six hours before you do the first shot because <laughs> this particular actress does only wants this makeup artist to do her makeup. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And I'm like, why? What is the problem? I say, oh. So and so only wants this person to do. She doesn't want her to do her, and she wants the same amount of time as. Wow. I said, man, your actors here have too much power. <laughs> <laughs> how do you help directors, even if they have a vision? How do you help them tell the best story possible? Like, what are the, what are the, some of the tricks you can give DOPs listening to get out the best of their collaboration with directors? I think the best thing I found is to have uh, visual references. Okay. Because you know you can dis you can you can describe a look to a director, but he's still going to have his own image in his mind of how that should look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To have a picture or a painting or whatever mm -hmm. will help to communicate, mm -hmm. and I think it goes across all departments, even from you know choosing colors for the costumes and everything. You just try to present as much visual material, visual material as possible. So like a lookbook, like, like a, a look treatment, yeah, exactly. that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's very good advice because a lot of people always assume that the work is that their work does not, like those mood boards and those lookbooks are not part of, unless they request, like you as a, you should have your own treatment, mm -hmm. right? Because normally it's, oh, the director, I remember that like one of the things we started doing that's been very helpful for us is that we ask for treatments from all departments. Mm -hmm. give, so before we feedback. give you feedback, <clears throat> give us your, your vision, vision of mm -hmm. what the character should be. And then that way, everything becomes a dialogue. And so you feel like you're... And we find that in, in most cases, you actually align on a lot of things. Yeah. It's yeah. A, yes, a yes, fewer yes. things that you... Or even the director will say, oh, that's actually a great idea. Okay. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. Whoa. <laughs> And that, that is how we end the show. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. It's what okay. Sorry. That what is happened? so funny. The chair... We're not cutting that out, guys. <laughs> how many times do you get to see Naz fall on camera? <laughs> <laughs> so let's just quickly put this one and, and, and do the right thing. Thank you. And we're back. So what you heard was this. For this so if you're an audio listener, you're definitely going to want to see the video for this. <laughs> I can kid you not, because that was the sound of me laughing as I fell in slow motion while trying to end the show. Right? Oh, yeah. Then when I go to try to cut it to protect my dignity, they lie. No, I'm not dignity going to protect it. unleashed. Never. <laughs> and Never. that's our show. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. See you next time. Catch us on all platforms. Oh, yes, but video for this one. Trust me. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye.